To recapitulate what I just taught, generically speaking, electron withdrawers, which are metadirectors, look like this. They are either an NR3 plus, or they are atoms that are doubly or triply bonded to other atoms that are more electronegative than themselves. This is what electron withdrawers look like. They suck electron density out of a ring. So what's a good way of memorizing that withdrawers are also metadirectors? By remembering that W equals M. I realize this doesn't make any sense. But if you can remember that a W is really an upside down M, then you can remember that withdrawers are metadirectors. Here, once again, is our list of examples of metadirectors. Now we'll return to our donors. Remember that, generically speaking, donating groups, which are orthoparadirectors, look like this. They are either alkyl or aryl groups, or they're atoms immediately bonded to the benzene ring that have at least one lone pair of electrons on them. You can also have atoms that are immediately bonded to a benzene ring that are bonded to other atoms that aren't more electronegative than they. Is there a good way of memorizing that donors are also orthoparadirectors? Yes, there is. We have to remember that donors smoke dope. In other words, we can remember that donors are ortho and paradirectors. D-O-P. I added the E because I thought it would be more easy to memorize dope instead of DOP. Here, once again, is our list of examples of donating substituents. You'll notice that, once again, every single one of them has at least one lone pair of electrons on them, except for those that are alkyl or aryl substituents. Let's move on to some lecture problems. What are the products of the following reactions? Because I'm going to discuss the answers to these problems on the upcoming slides, this might be a good place for you to pause the video and attempt to do them first on your own. Here are the answers. First of all, in this problem, I have nitrobenzene. And I'm going to be treating it under these conditions, SO3 and H2SO4. H2SO4 and heat also will do the same exact thing. So where in the world, or what does this reaction do, first of all? Well, we might remember from chapter 15 or from a few slides ago that what it does is it places an SO3H onto the ring. The question then arises, where does the SO3H go? Does it go ortho, meta, or para to this NO2? The answer has nothing to do with, this, with these reagents. All we do is look at the substituent that's already on the ring. And we ask ourselves, is this substituent an ortho para director, or is it a meta director? Now you'll remember that NO2 looks like a nitrogen that is doubly bonded to an oxygen on one side and singly bonded to an O minus on the other. In other words, it's an atom that's doubly bonded to another atom that's more electronegative than it. Hence, it is a withdrawer. If we remember our little mnemonic device, we will remember that withdrawers are metadirectors. Hence, the SO3H ends up being meta to the NO2. Let's go down to our second example. Here I have this starting material, toluene, and I treat it under the same conditions. I know that those conditions put an SO3H on the ring. But where does the SO3H end up? Does it end up ortho and para, or does it end up meta? Once again, the answer to that question depends completely on what this substituent is. Is it a withdrawer, or is it a donor? You're right, you might remember that alkyl chains, including CH3s, are donors. We remember our mnemonic device, DOPE. Donors make things go ortho and para. Hence, we get a mixture 
of the SO3H being ortho to the methyl and the other product where the SO3H is para to the methyl group. Those are the products that we get in mixture. Now that might seem a little bit unfair for us to get a mixture of two products, and you might think that isn't very efficient. I would agree with you. But you should remember that when we synthesize these in real life, these two products are typically very easy to separate. So we can isolate exclusively the one that we desire. Let's look at our other examples. In this one, I've got this molecule, benzoic acid, being treated with nitric acid and catalytic sulfuric acid. What does this reaction do? Well, we remember from chapter 15 that it puts an NO2 on the ring. But where does that NO2 go? Does it go ortho and para to this substituent, or does it go meta to this substituent? Once again, the answer to that question has nothing to do with these reagents right here. It has everything to do with what this substituent is. So we look at this substituent and ask ourselves, is it a meta director or an ortho para director? Well, this substituent has an atom that's doubly bonded to another atom more electronegative than itself. Hence, it is a withdrawer. We remember that W equals M, so it is going to put an NO2 meta to the initial substituent. Down here in this example, I'm doing a Friedel Crafts alkylation. I'm going to be putting a CH2CH3 onto the ring. Where does it go? That depends completely upon the identity of this substituent. This substituent is a chlorine. What kind of substituent is that? Is it a donor or a withdrawer? Well, you'll remember that chlorine has lone pairs on it. You'll also remember from what I taught before that all of these atoms that have lone pairs on them, when they are bound or bonded immediately to the benzene ring, are donors. We remember that donors make things go ortho and para. We use the mnemonic device DOPE. Hence, we will get a mixture of the ortho product and the para product. Now let's look at this slightly more complex example. Which benzene ring am I put, uh, picking to put my substituent on? Well, it doesn't really matter because this uh, molecule is completely symmetrical down the middle. So I am going to, just for the fun of it, arbitrarily pretend that this is the benzene ring we're going to put our acyl substituent on using this Friedel Crafts acylation reaction. I then look at the rest of this thing as being a substituent dangling off of this benzene ring. What kind of substituent is it? Well, as I have indicated here, it is a donor. Why? Because I've got an oxygen. An oxygen has at least one lone pair, actually two lone pairs, and it's bonded immediately to this benzene ring. Hence, the substituent that's placed on this ring, this acyl substituent, ends up going ortho and para in a mixture.